All righty. Um, just as a reminder, uh, you can click on the, for those of you on Zoom, you can click on the participant uh, tab at the very bottom of the screen. And when you do that, up will pop a little box that looks like this, um, where you can, as Carol asks questions, or if she asks you to raise your hand or something, you can click on one of these buttons at the very bottom there. Also, there's a chat box here where you're welcome to enter your questions and Carol and I will be monitoring that chat box and answering your questions. So uh, the best way if possible is to enter your question that way as you think of something and then that way we'll make sure we get to it. Please make sure that when you send that message, you're sending it to everybody, you type it right down here at the very, very bottom. Please note that this event is being recorded and is currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on Facebook and for on YouTube for others to view in the future. And I'll show you that at the end of the session. By participating in this event, and if you post a comment in the chat box or have your microphone or camera on, you give consent for your comments, name, and pictures to appear. We will be reviewing two or three resumes today at the end, of, towards the uh, second half of this presentation. We'll do it live online. And you can submit your resumes by using the chat box right down there. Uh, you'll see a little thing that says file. When you click that, you can open up your resume and send it. But please note, if you want to delete your personal information at the very top of your resume, you can say this is from Mickey Mouse or John Doe or whoever. Uh, but please do that before you submit, because we can't hide it once we get it. So uh, just remember your information will be published and be live on Facebook and YouTube for everybody else to see. All right, uh, good afternoon. My name is Jeff Morris. I founded Career DFW back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the DFW area. Uh, in 2012, I uh, came up with careerusa.org to help people outside the DFW area by splitting some of the information we had on the DFW website. So. Uh, you know, I manage both websites and it's nice uh, helping other people. Uh, I've also led the, or I facilitate the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group since 2007. I'm also part of the practice interview team. I've been doing that since 2016, uh, uh, conducting interviews to help people uh, in their job search. Today, our speaker is Kara Burkell. She's a certified professional career coach. She's going to tell you a little bit more about herself. And Carol, I will turn it over to you. Hey, thank you, Jeff. And can you hear me okay, Jeff? As yes. I share my screen. Excellent. So I will share my presentation. And get it in presentation mode. Slow and responding. And welcome to everybody in our audience today. And uh, I see some familiar names and one familiar name that I've known for decades, actually. So it's nice to have uh, friendly faces in the audience. And I'm pleased to be here again. This is maybe our third or fourth time doing this particular uh, webinar. And every week I, I change it up and add additional content. There's some basic information I do review regarding resumes, but I'm always adding in new content based on research. And as Jeff mentioned, during the second half of this webinar, we will have the opportunity to review any uh, resumes that you'd like to submit. So if you'd like to submit a resume, um, you're welcome to submit it. And if you want to remain anonymous, you can change the name at the top of the resume and even change a couple company names and send those to us in the chat box and we will review those. And I'm going to open up the chat box for myself so I can see any files coming in. Good. All right. And so a quick reminder regarding Zoom, we are going to be making this interactive and we will be using the participant function and the chat screen. So at this point in time, if you could click on the participant box and and go ahead and if you could click the green check mark if you can hear my voice and see the screens. So click on the, hover over that lower menu of the, your Zoom menu and then open up the participant box and click on the green check mark if you can hear my voice and see the slides. And I'm seeing lots of good check marks there from almost everyone. So that's, that's great. Good, and I wanna thank 
I won't say your names out loud. I do have a resume that has been submitted for review. And I'm going to save that in my special folder for when we are ready to do that review. So thank you for submitting a sample resume. And what we'll do at the second half of this webinar is we'll have a chance to comment on what we like about it. And if we do see any opportunities for improvement to make your resume more effective, we'll provide those comments as well. And now at this time, I'd like for you all to click on the chat box and open that up because we will use that throughout this webinar. In fact, to get started, to kind of as a warm up activity with the chat box, I have a question for you. And the question is, how often do you customize your resume when you apply for a job? If you can go into chat and type in an answer, like every time, never, sometimes. Okay, and I'm seeing lots of answers coming in. A lot of people saying every time. I try to do it every time. Good. And somebody says rare. Try to each time, sometimes. And during today's webinar, we will provide some guidance to you on kind of an easy way to update your resume. And you should customize it every time you apply for a job because the goal when you're applying is you want to make sure, make, make it easy for the applicant tracking system and for the recruiters or hiring managers who are screening your resumes to make it easy for them to see that you're a good match for the job. And some people say it depends on the position. And somebody said not had the opportunity to do so. Well, if you've applied for a job, you've had the opportunity and we'll give you some tricks on how to do that. Good, and I see another resume has been submitted for today. So we've got two volunteers and, and that will be plenty for today. So thank you for today's volunteers with sharing your resume. And a little bit of background about myself. I've worked at a company called EDS that was acquired by Hewlett Packard. And I worked there over 30 years as a, in a variety of different roles, technical sales, uh, marketing, learning and development, leadership development, HR, a variety of different roles. And in all of those roles, I was usually a hiring manager and I also mentored other hiring managers. And then when I retired in 2012, I purposely took a job as a recruiter at one of the biggest staffing firms so I could really learn how the recruiting industry works because I wanted to learn all the tips and tricks that I can now share with you all today. And when I retired, I took a role in an agency environment, and I also had the opportunity to work in a corporate recruiting setting. And I've placed candidates in a variety of roles, including HR, IT, accounting finance, program project management, and sales. And also like Jeff, I'm a volunteer for the Dallas Pit Crew, which stands for the Practice Interview Team. And this is where we help people practice for interviews. We actually conduct a mock panel interview and provide feedback. And during this pandemic, we've migrated to a virtual capability. So we still conduct those mock interviews using Zoom technology and it works beautifully, works beautifully. And then I'm also certified by the Professional Association of Resume Writers and Career Coaches. To do that, I had to take a 70 question essay test, which I actually had fun doing, <laughs> so. And anyway, and this is today's agenda. And I'm wondering if um, you could go back to the participant box, give me a green check mark if you've seen one of my presentations before about resumes. If you've seen one of, one of mine before, and if not, hit a red X if you've never seen my, one of my sessions about resumes. Okay, so it's a, it's a mixture again. Okay, good. And I, that's why I add content every time to freshen it up if you're coming back for a review, there'll be a couple things that are important that we will review, but there's a couple of fun new slides that I've added as well. And then I change up the discussion questions. Good. And welcome to those who have never seen this presentation before. So part one of this webinar, I will talk about some key things like applicant tracking systems. And then we will talk about common mistakes in resumes. I was doing some research over the last couple of weeks and I'll share some of those findings with you. 
and then we'll walk through some key components and formatting suggestions regarding a resume and take any of your questions. And throughout the presentation, if you do have any questions, both Jeff and I are monitoring the chat box. And when you see me looking over here, I'm looking at my other monitor where I can see all the chats and the participant box over here. So we'll pause for a quick Q&A, and then we will review the sample resumes that the, the two of you have submitted today. Thank you for that. So is everybody ready to rock and roll? We don't need any more volunteers. Now we're going to talk about applicant tracking systems. If you can name an applicant tra tracking system, go into the chat box and type in the name of a system. If you happen to know the name of any, and somebody's already typed one in, Taleo. That's one of the big systems that a lot of major corporations, EDS and HP used, Taleo. And also another one is iSIMS, and also big ERP systems like Workday have created a, an applicant tracking component. Somebody wrote in Workday, that's absolutely correct. And these applicant tracking systems are the systems when you are applying online, your resume is going into those systems. The way they read the data is they look through the data in your, your resume and they parse it. They take the different pieces of data out and put it within their databases. Your name, address, titles of your titles, company names, years, dates, all that information. And if you have special characters, boxes, underlines, special fun bullet points that aren't the regular dot, but are some other character, that can throw off the ATS system and throw off the ability to be able to read your data. And so therefore, for the version you upload in the ATS system, you want to make sure it's clean of any, um, any special formatting, clean. The little bullet points, the default bullet points are fine. I've done some research on that, but anything else, you don't want to have any special characters in there. Also, you don't want to have text in the header and the footer because it it, the ATS systems may not pick that up. However, what you want to do is make sure your resume has been customized and includes some of the key words relating to the job description that you're applying to. And we'll show some examples of how to do that. And a tool that you can use to test that is called jobscan.co. It's a tool where you can submit your resume and a sample job description and it, and it will tell you if you have a 30% match or a 70% match based on the language you're using and how well that matches the job description. And then with the applicant tracking systems, you can also attach a resume as an attachment. And when I worked as a recruiter, especially as in a corporate recruiting setting where we would post a job through our ATS system and we'd get 100 or 200 or 300 applicants, what I did as a recruiter after the ATS system sorted them based on keyword matches, I would look at the top maybe 5% of the resumes and just click on that resume as an attachment to look at the, the resume. And I'd spend maybe five or 10 seconds looking at that resume. And as a recruiter, I didn't ever have time to look at the cover letters that were submitted in the ATS. So I'd say, don't spend a lot of time on those. Sometimes the applicant tracking systems require them. Don't spend a lot of time on them because they may not get looked at. I never had time. That's my honest, honest confession. So overall characteristics and goals for good resumes is you want to make it easy. Easy for the system and easy for the people, the recruiters, the hiring managers, to see that you're a good match for that job. So you want to make sure that the formatting is clean, easy to read, enough white space where it's easy to read, not too much text. And you want to think about the overall length of your resume. Um, go into chat right now and type in the number of how many pages your current resume is right now. So how, how many pages is your resume? Go into chat. And most people are saying two. And that's actually a good magic number. I like saying two. And when, I, when I talk to recruiters and hiring managers, they like that as well. And sometimes three may be appropriate, especially for highly technical jobs, or if you have a lot of publications or certifications. And um, some types of roles, like government roles, do require 
more, um, more information. So longer might be okay, or higher education res resumes, sometimes longer. But for basic corporate type of jobs, two is kind of the magic number. Some people are saying one. For a true resume, rarely I've seen a one-page resume. You know, when somebody's a recent college grad and they may have had one or two jobs or an internship and a job, that can usually fit on one page. It usually does go on, on to two pages and that's absolutely fine. And um, there is another type of document and that's an executive one-page biography. And that's a different type of document. You can actually Google and see different formats for that. That's really to highlight your accomplishments, maybe some accolades, the industries and skills that you highlight. And that's a document you can use for networking or informational discussions. But for a, a true resume, they're usually um, two pages. And somebody said they've gotten the resume down from four pages down to three. Good job. And if you want to try to get it down to two, if you need some help, you're welcome to reach out to me. And um, during this pandemic year, I have offered, as a career coach, I am offering a free session to anyone who does have a need. So I, I extend this to, um, you know, through Jeff and to anyone on this call. If you do have a need, you're struggling with your resume or job search strategies, um, you're welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn and, and schedule a time. You had a, uh, there was a question in there about font and size. Thank Three you. Recommendations. Okay. Good, good. And it's funny, I've been answering the question about font that I tend to like 11 or 12 for the font size. And, I, and doing some research, what I find is they recommend between 10 and 12, but sometimes 10 can be a little bit small. So 11, 11, 11 is really the best number. And in terms of types of font, Calibri, if, if somebody knows how to pronounce that, please let me know. Is it Calibri or Calibri? Uh, Calibri's one, Arial. Some people use Times New Roman. I find that to be a little bit flowery when I'm trying to read a lot of resumes. I like the cleaner, blonder Texas is Calibri is the one in my, um, the template def that I provide. So thank you for that. Yeah, one other thing I'll, I'll throw in there that when we talk about overall length of your resume, I tell people you should have a 10 page resume, a resume that you've had since you were scooping ice cream in high school, or whatever you did in high school. Put all those jobs down, have all the details, but then when you see a job posting, you go and you get rid of everything that's unimportant so that the recruiter only sees what they're looking for. And this way you don't have to think about, no, wait a second, I think I did that back when I was in, you know, 1995 or something. You know, you don't have to think about it if you have one resume that you can then cut down every time. Excellent. Somebody said, that's a brilliant idea, Jeff. Great. And uh, somebody said, Khalid Libri. Thank you for spelling that out for me. Somebody's asking me about Georgia font. And I've, I'm personally not familiar with it, but if it's really clean and kind of blocky like, like this, it's probably fine. And I'm going to go look at that after this session <laughs> and see what it, what it looks like. So we will maybe. attach in the chat box a, a sample resume and a sample cover letter a little bit later. So uh, you'll see the resume that Carol's holding up, you'll, get a, you'll be able to download that if you'd like. Thank you. Good. And another question I get very frequently, especially from people that are very experienced, is how many years of experience should I show on my resume? And basically, you, you have three choices. And when you get input on resumes, you get a lot of different feedback and opinions. Um, you get opinions from me based on you know, my experience or my perspective based on being a recruiter and presenting resumes to hiring managers. And, and you may get other perspectives as well. And what you want to do is, is take all those inputs and decide work, what works best for you. And in terms of number of years, one option is you can show all of your years of working. And I, frankly, that's what I did on my resume, starting with 1980 all the way through the present. And I got a job at the age of 60. Now I was networking with people that I knew, they knew my background, they knew I'd been, been around the block a few times. And uh, so they, they knew me and I just showed all my experience within two pages on my resume. So that's one option, show, show everything. The other option is to 
cut it off after 10 to 15 years. However, I'll tell you as a recruiter, when I would get resumes like that and I was sitting down and screening candidates, and if I asked them a question and they told me a story when they worked at a certain company and I couldn't find it on the resume, it would cause confusion. And I could tell the resume wasn't telling me the whole story. And so again, I felt like I didn't have the whole picture. I felt like I wasn't presenting the whole story about that person to the hiring manager. So the third option is you can go into more detail about your most recent jobs in your last most recent 10 or 15 years or maybe 20 years, and then have a new heading that says prior relevant experience and you can simply list the company names and your titles. You don't have to put the dates, but that way it's kind of a compromise. You can show the full picture of the companies you've worked for, and you can mention them if needed, if a story comes up, and it won't cause any confusion for the recruiter or hiring manager, um, but it does show the full picture and it may not, you don't have to show the, the dates. Carol, on Facebook, uh, John said, I heard what you said, what dates do you put on uh, the jobs that you list way back when? And so what I would tell John is what Carol just said, use number three, prior work experience or prior experiences, and just list the name of the company and what your job title is. And your title, and you don't have to put the dates. Some people do, but you don't have to. You don't have to. Now, when you fill out, sometimes on the ATM system, it'll ask you for all those dates. And LinkedIn will ask you for all those dates. But and if you have, and if you have your ten-page resume, you don't have to go think about what those dates were. They're already there once. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, somebody's asking me a, a question about the personal statement summary. Be valuable it means my length increases. Um, that might be a conversation. The person that has a question about trying to get their resume down to two pages. If we need to, to talk, you're welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn, Carol Burkell. I think I'm the only one out there that's a career coach. Um, we can definitely talk offline on that one. Okay. So I did a little research over the last couple of weeks as I've been doing these webinars because I always like to add fresh content. And I was looking at several sources, about four or five different sources about common resume mistakes. And these are from places that specialize in providing consulting on resumes. And I found most of them had the same mistakes. There, in all the different sites I looked at, they had pretty much the same type of themes. The number one issue, do not have any spelling or grammatical errors on your resume. And even make sure your verbs, and we'll talk about that, are, are parallel and all in the present tense or past tense for past jobs. Um, have somebody proof your resume uh, before you send it out, at least your kind of your basic version of your resume. Because I will say 90% of the resumes I look at have some sort of error in them. And then um, make sure you're using a, a professional email address. You know, it should be carol.raquel at gmail.com or yahoo.com or brickell.carol at yahoo.com, which is my email address, not Carol the cat woman at, <laughs> at Rocket Mail or, or Carol likes to drink or, you know, or something you know, unprofessional. Make sure it's professional and, and related to your name if possible. Okay. And then also make sure, um, or one of the big mistakes is failure to demonstrate straight results. And we'll show some examples of how you can do that better on your resume. And this is an interesting one. Um, I saw it on many of these places where they're making recommendations. Don't use too many of those overused phrases or buzzwords like, I'm a strategic thinker, I'm a problem solver, I'm hardworking, detail oriented. A lot of people put that in their profile, these kind of overused buzzwords. What you wanna do is really emphasize your skills that you bring and if the job description does require some professional skills like the ability to work in an ambiguous environment or in a fast paced environment, you may include that in your text, but don't just start off or have a list of all these buzzwords. Recruiters are getting tired of seeing those. So I thought that was interesting. And then also many of these sites are, are saying a big mistake is people are trying to do too many fancy things 
with the design of their resume because they want to stand out. So they'll add different columns, but it's, it's hard for the brain as a recruiter is quickly trying to scan a resume within five to 10 seconds to see if you're a match, if some things are on the right hand column and different type of data is over on the left hand, that gets confusing. And I'll show the next screen and I'll pause for a moment to see, Jeff, if you have any comments about any of these. And then another very common mistake is people put in too much text. You may want to tell the whole story. There's so much about these neat projects you want to put in there, but you just want to put the headline. You know, I reduced turnover by implementing this system or, you know, um, increased revenue by doing this or exceeded targets five years in a row, you know, just put the headlines down that capture people's attention. And don't- And make sure there's results. Make sure you have dollars, percentages, numbers, something in there to show, you know, you can tell us what you did, but we wanna know what the results are. That's, that's what gets the attention. Yes, absolutely. And if somebody asks you in the interview, you have to explain how you got that number. So you need to make sure you're telling a story that you can tell in an interview as well. And um, don't use the first person. Don't start off your summary by saying, I am a very detail-oriented, fast learner. Uh, don't use the first person. Everything should be written in the third person. Um, so we'll, we'll show examples of that. And you don't have to put references available on request. That's a, that's a given. Everybody understands that. And references are typically submitted separately. They're in a separate document or separately into the system. Another big mistake is not customizing the resume to match the job. Just last week, I was coaching somebody and their resume said that they were a customer service manager, but they were applying for an operations manager job. And and it didn't match at all. And then also, a big mistake is not including your LinkedIn address at the top of the resume. You want to make sure you have a good LinkedIn profile with a good professional headshot. And uh, your LinkedIn profile should mirror and match your resume in terms of the companies and dates. And you should include your LinkedIn address on your resume. Remember that your resume is not a legal document that you're, you know, so that as Carol was just talking about job titles, if you need to switch your job title to make it match the company, I mean, a lot, there are a lot of companies out there that have really weird job titles mm -hmm. and you never be the vice president of people uh, acquisitions or whatever it's called, you know, I mean, you, you need to make your job description match. When you fill out a job application, that is a legal document and you do need to put down exactly what the job title is but your resume is there just to get them to call you up on the phone and say, hey, let's talk. Right, right. Because often um, recruiters are screening out people that might appear overqualified or underqualified based on those job titles. So if you worked at a real small company that gave out the VP, vice president title to everyone, but you're applying for a manager position, you may just soften it by saying, I was a customer service leader instead of vice president or something that may make you appear overqualified. It's not lying. It's just saying you were a leader and, um, and representing it that way on the resume. You're absolutely correct. There is another question here. Would you recommend getting a separate email address to use for your job search? And I say yes. Personally, I say yes because I want to keep all my personal emails to friends and family on one account, and I want to do all my job search on another account. But the important thing is when you do get hired and you are employed, you have to continue to check both accounts or have mail from one account sent to the other account forwarded so that you've made, you've done all your networking and you've reached out to all these people using this job email account. Uh, you want to make sure you can respond to them if they would reach out to you a week or two later and offer you a job, uh, want help about something, you don't want to lose that whole part of your uh, career or your uh, right. life. Yes, and I would say it, it is kind of a personal choice. Now, I choose just to keep one because I don't have to check multiple emails. So I just have one. But the ultimate goal is to make sure whatever email address you do use, that it's fairly professional for your job search and, and then whatever works best for you. Good, good questions there. Okay. Now, we'll quickly go through the, the key components of a resume. 
And this is based on a format that I've been using for years as I've been coaching people. And the format I use is also what they teach when I got certified. And it's also the format that they teach in the career transition workshops that are taught in the DFW area. And some may say it's, it's rather old fashioned, tried and true. And, and the benefit of that is most hiring managers are used to seeing data in this format. So you wanna make it easy for hiring managers and recruiters. And these are some of the key components of a resume. There may be other components. These are the ones we'll talk about today. There are other components, such as for sales resumes, there may be an additional component, such as key accomplishments. And we may highlight that. I think I'm gonna highlight that next time and add that. And, and you have professional experience. And if you have a lot of experience, you may have another section that says previous relevant experience. So. The heading needs to be clean, you know, have your name very, you know, quickly recognizable at the top and all the pertinent contact information, email address, phone number, the, the um, city of where you're located and LinkedIn address, but you do not need to include your physical street address anymore. Summary profile. This is the section you absolutely should be modifying and customizing every time you apply for a job. And we'll show a, a graphic in a minute that explains how you can do this. And this is a profile that describes who you are as a professional. It's not an objective that says I'm seeking an opportunity with a growing company. This is a statement of who you are and the skills that you need relating to the job you're applying to. And then the areas of expertise the list and the ones across the top should be the top three skills that you're looking for on the job and Jeff's nodding. That's one of his favorite things. Yeah. And I, I'd say 90% of the time when I review people's resume, if they say, here, here's my resume and here's a job description. I'll look at that and I'll say those three things don't align to what I'm reading in the resume. And so you have to be careful about that and we'll show you how to do that. One, Jeff, one of my one of my favorite questions when I interview people, when I see a chart like this, it says, tell me your top three skills. And they either, they better be either the three on the very left or the three on the very, very top. Because when you go and say, well, I'm a user interface number one, developing test plans number two, and customer facing roles number three, it's like, well, why'd you put those other ones there? Why are the other ones not the most important ones? So, you know, yeah. please make sure that you put the three down that to you that you're ready to talk about the most and tell me stories about. Right, and that they align to that job too, good. And then your professional experience, it should be in chronological, reverse chronological order with the most recent job first, easy to read, and make sure the verbs are clean. I've had hiring managers throw resumes away if the verbs are messed up in the present tense, if some have end in ing, some end in s, some are present tense, some are past tense. I've seen hiring managers throw those out. So for a current job, they should be all in the present tense. For past jobs, they should all be in the, the past tense. And other recruiters and I recommend you should limit your number of bullets five to eight per job. You don't want 10, 15, 20, a hiring manager can't absorb that. You want to really focus on the, the major headlines, focus on results. And I'll show you real quickly a little game you can play with yourself to make your resume more impactful and to focus more on results. You may have a, a bullet point that, that says, you know, I developed visual basic programs to automate the conversion of data. And this is actually from a real story with somebody I was um, mentor, mentoring. And so they had this bullet on their resume and I said, well, so what? Um, which is a funny way of asking them, what was the result? What was the impact? What was the accomplishment for doing this? And he answered me and said, well, actually this helped us reduce the data migration time that eliminated errors and increased stakeholder and client confidence, which is tremendous. So I said, well, what you need to do is make sure your bullet really focuses on the results less on the activity that you did. So he totally rewarded it and said, the bullet point was he reduced data and eliminated errors and increased stakeholder con confidence by developing those visual basic programs. So that's a little game you can play with yourself. Go through your um, resume, the bullet points. You may not be able to do it for everyone, but try to, you know, for a few within your job, 
and as Jeff mentioned, add quantifiable data where you have it and you can back it up and you can tell the story. Because if you have quantifiable data, you may get asked in an interview to tell that story. And if you have multiple roles in a company, you should, the dates that are right justified to the, to the right should be the full time you are at the company. And then in parentheses show the dates for the various jobs you have. Many times I see resumes where people put these dates almost separately out to the right and it looks like they hopped around from three different jobs. We've got, uh, so we have a question that just popped up at my prior job. I was at my prior job for 24 years and accomplished many different items. Is it still valid to assume to only have five bullet points or split the 24 years up in the segments? You know, Michael, I think I would say that over 24 years, you didn't have the same job title. So for every job title, you want to put a few bullet points and then that would allow you to break it up just like we're talking about here, how you know, company C, you put the total time you were there, but then underneath that, you have each role uh, that you did while you're there with, with a few bullet points. Right, and that shows a nice progression and it keeps it kind of legible and readable. And then somebody else, if you've been in the company for the entire time, what do you do? Yeah, you break it up based on the roles that you had. Hopefully, um, actual roles. Somebody also put on here, uh, Dolores is asking, What's your opinion on having subheaders in that group uh, bullets by function within a job? Um, does that help the reader or cause more fluff and hard to read through? My personal opinion, just off the top of my head, when I've seen that done, it, it takes up valuable real estate on the resume and doesn't always add value. There might be cases where it does. So <laughs> my initial impression is probably not, but there might be cases where you really want to highlight something where it might make sense. I think you, I think you need to remember when you're put, people get hung up, I, I feel people get hung up on their resumes way too much. You're going to spend hours and hours and weeks and weeks working on a resume. You could put 10 resume experts in a boxing mat, in a boxing ring, and say, okay, come up with the perfect resume. The person who would win would be the person who's the strongest with the biggest punch because quite frankly, everybody wants something a little bit different. So you don't want your resident, you just wanna make sure you're sticking to what the job requirements are because you wanna make it easy for that recruiter to spend the 10 or 15, maybe 15 seconds, probably 10 seconds they spend on it to go, yes, all right, I'll spend more time on this and put it in a different pile. So. Uh, yeah. Don't, and it's, yeah. And don't, don't spend too much, don't overthink it or over, yeah, over, over organize it. And especially if you're applying for a project manager job, you wouldn't want headings about account management and customer service probably as, as, as much. So, okay. Okay. And then one quick note, um, a lot of companies get acquired, change names or even go away. Here are a couple ways of handling these situations that if you have a, company on your resume that has changed names, you can put the current name of the company and then put formerly. For example, on my resume back in 2012 when I retired, it said Hewlett Packard, but formerly EDS. Or the other way I could have done it is I could have said EDS acquired by Hewlett Packard in 2008. I could have done that. So those are a couple of different options of, of um, handling that. And then you should put your education and software skills. And if they do ask for MS Word and MS Microsoft Excel, go ahead and put it on your resume. People are saying, shouldn't I leave that off? Everybody has that. But if the job description asks for it, it's good. And if they ask for other software that you have, be sure that it's on your resume. I'm gonna show this slide really quickly. It's one of my favorite ones. Gotta get out my annotation pen for this one. Okay. We talked about aligning and customizing your resume to a job description. And I can't forward it on an annotation. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and do that. So what you want to do is first study the job description. Get into that head of that hiring manager. What are they looking for? You know, they're looking for somebody, in this case, it's a business analyst position. They're looking for somebody who can document business requirements somebody who can create process flow charts, 
somebody can use Visual Studio among other skills. So get into the head of what they're really looking for and make sure that you're using that, that language that they're, they're looking for. Process flow charts and vis Visual Studio. So this is where you really want to make sure your, your profile and areas of expertise align with what the job is looking for and that the experiences that you have align with what you're highlighting and make sure if there's any spe specific software requirements or methodologies like Agile that you're highlighting those as well. Any questions or comments on that? This is very important. And I find 90% of the people I coach skip this step. Just totally skip it. Get it out and literally mark up that job description. Can you quickly go back to the slide be, uh, that has the multiple dates on it again? Sure. There's, here we go. Uh, there is a, a comment here. J John's asking, why do you suggest that the dates are right next to the job titles? Uh, let me oh. show you. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let me annotate here. So here is your job title for all of these jobs. Okay. For the now, company. For the, for the, the time you're at the you're same company, right? The company. Over here, this is the role you had for these two years. Here's a role you had for these four years. Here's a role you had for these two years. And these are all subtitles inside of here. You want somebody to know that you worked at a company for eight years, for 10 years, or 20 years. But then these are all the, when you had this role, you did it for two years. And that's what, uh, that's what we mean by putting the uh, dates right next to the job title. And so visually, it's very easy for the recruiter to say, oh, you were there that whole time. And then these were the dates just associated with these jobs. Because otherwise, if you put these dates out to the right, it looks like you hopped from company to, it looks like you had different companies you were working for and that you were a job hopper. So this makes it look like you have longevity. Great, all right, thank you. Let's, okay. uh, we can and move on here. There's a couple other quick questions. Take away other software skills if they didn't ask for it. If they're kind of related to the industry or the job, um, it shows some depth to keep some of those other ones there. I think that's fine, um, especially if it's relevant. It, it shows that you've worked between packages and that you're kind of a, adaptable and a quick learner. List the most important ones first. Um, if you're and I think also about that is that if it's going to take you going to an additional line, maybe you don't let, add it on there if it's not part of it. But if you have space in that line to add a few more, you might as well stick them on there because you've got the space. Right, right. Okay. And if you remained in the same role and were promoted, do you need to include both or keep them as one span? I typically like to so know if you're in a role and then you are promoted and you have a slightly different title, maybe supervisor, I like to see that on the resume and have a few bullets under each job because that shows you were promoted and that shows good progression and hiring managers look for that. So that's what I'd recommend for that one. Hopefully that answered that question. I think we're gonna have to go run right into. Okay, we're not, we don't have a time constraint today so we don't have to be out by two, so. Oh, okay, good. So we'll have time to see both of our resumes. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to pull up this, the sample resumes, of the two that have been submitted, the two that were submitted first. I'll pull up one and I'll scroll through it. And, and I'd like for people to think about what do they like about that resume. We want to provide some positive feedback. And then also, you know, if there's any areas for improvement that could improve the effectiveness of that resume. Okay. Let me see if this will work. Do you see a resume? Yes, we see it. Okay, good, good. Now what I need to do is bring up my chat box again. Okay, okay good, good. All right, so I'm going to scroll through this resume and thank you for submitting it. 
It has a, a summary section and qualifications. It has the professional experience section. Which one is with the, we'll talk about the dates. Okay. More professional experience and then education and then other experiences and memberships and HRM. Wow, look at all the software packages. See, to me, that shows, I like that because it shows, wow, you not only learned, you know, workforce now, but paycheck, you've, you've learned a lot of different things related to HR. So that's, that's cool. Okay, so I'd like to ask the participants, you know, based on, you know, a brief scan, and that's about how long a recruiter looks at a resume, what did you like? What did you see that you liked? And then, um, is there any opportunity to improve effectiveness? It's comprehensive, people like the detail. There is I think, some- I think the line around the outside of it may be a problem. I don't know. If yes, that would be that. a formatting issue. Yes, for yeah. ATS version, um, I would not have any of those lines. And I don't see any other special characters. But the, the border around it and these lines in between could throw off an ATS system. And then you can make the personal choice if you want to have an ATS version that's clean and another version with the boxes. Me, I just, I didn't want to have to maintain two different versions every time I applied for a job. So that's, that's totally, that's up to you. Somebody likes the detail. And you don't need to have a street address on there. That's not important. It's yes, important yeah, that you have a city, address. state, and zip, but uh, the rest of the information isn't, Yes, you know. And you can get a little more space if you don't just list all of your contact information underneath your name if you spread it out that just puts it on two lines you can do it that way okay. and then that's a bit that's words. a bit much right in there i think that should maybe be three or four lines at the most i agree jeff um, three or four lines is is the best practice for that and i wouldn't center this i would i would write justify that it's kind of a paragraph and be careful of these buzzwords um Okay. And then these are hard to read. There's too many, hard to read. I know they're bigger phrases. So I would just, I would focus maybe on nine of them and try to, like payroll administration, just leave it at that. Um, I mean, you could have a separate bullet if it's important for the job, payroll software. That's, you know, that's your expertise. Building, training, and motivating. I think that's something that everybody does. So I think that would be something you could just totally eliminate, maybe. Unless it's a top requirement for the job. In this world, right. somebody who's a learning and development specialist and can motivate and train people, it depends on, on what they're looking for. Okay. Oh, also, somebody put in the comments that she doesn't have her LinkedIn page listed there. So she probably should add her LinkedIn. Good catch. Yeah. The catch. And um, yeah, I'd put these so they're not centered. I would make them, somebody said bullet points. You can make them bullet points or just make them very clean columns so they're easy to read. Okay. And here's one of these date situations where um, this person that looks like was promoted and congratulations for that, going from director to VP. And this is where the dates get confusing. So I would say if you work for Mustang, you should say Mustang and put Plano, the city over here right after memory care and put the date April 2014 through March 2020 is the time you were at Mustang. And then in parentheses, VP of Human Resources, April 2019 to March 2020. And then the director, April 2014 to April 2019. And if you have any questions about that, you're welcome to follow up with me. I just posted in the chat box for everybody the sample resume that Carol's been putting up and also a sample cover letter. You're welcome to download those. Uh, just remember when you download it, remember where you downloaded it at. Otherwise, you'll spend hours trying to find that file. So uh, okay. it's there. Okay, and I'm going to point out the verbs here. 
Okay, this was the past tense because it, it, it ended as I'm seeing a lot of resumes now with the pandemic, uh, you know, in March, these should all be past tense and see they're not. There's past, there's presence, past. So be, be careful of that. And research and selection. We can say so select what? It. Select what? It. Yeah, research and select it maybe. Select it. Right. So this one, you could kind of flip around the statement. You answered the um, you answered the so what question. You researched and selected Hig Higginbotham as the premier benefit broker. And I'd say, well, so what? Well, so what? The impact was you reduced company and employee benefit plan costs. And you could probably quantify that in terms of either dollar amounts or percentage. And so you could start off that bullet by saying reduced benefit plan costs by 20% or 40% by researching and selecting blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's a perfect example of how you can turn a bullet point into more results oriented. You have it almost there. Do you use the present? Okay, somebody, oh, somebody asked the question. Do you use the present tense for your current position if you are furloughed, technically still employed there? Yeah, in that situation, you'd probably say to present and everything would still be in present tense because you're still technically an employee. However, you know, in an interview, they may ask you, why are you looking? You'll say, well, I'm furloughed, still technically an employee, but they have given us the, the freedom to look for other opportunities. So that's what's led me here to talk to you about this opportunity. So um, I think in that situation, especially if you say to present, you could put that in current tense. Okay. So I go through these and ask, your, play the so what game with yourself. Okay. So manage the recruiting process for all open positions. Well, so what? What did you do? What did, did you improve anything? Or, yeah. Okay. And then education. And some people are starting to leave off dates on education. Sometimes yours is, this one's fairly recent. That's probably fine. This seems to be tabbed in quite a bit. The, I don't know, doesn't really align. These don't really align with anything. I don't think I would have that tabbed over quite as far. HR, PHR, okay, S, and then the SHRM. Good, and you have those, I was looking to see if they were on the, after your name at the title, that's good. Other experience, okay, that should have been under your professional experience section. I would move this other experience underneath your professional experience before your education. I would say prior, not other, because I'm like, other, is it going on now? Are you with the police department now? Or are these current part-time jobs? If they were previous, I would say prior relevant experience, if they were relevant. Memberships. Again, these aren't these are tabbed over at different spaces. Spacing looks a little funny. Okay. And HRM. Well, there are other types of software packages here, so you may just want to say software experience because not all these are HRM, HR management systems. All right, any questions in the chats? Let's see. Are the three bold bullets under the name? Somebody asked a question. The three bold bullets under the name. High impact, high growth organization, strategic executive. Program. Oh, I didn't even see that. Okay. Um, I would put the job title you're applying to right there. Yeah, like, yeah, human resources leader or manager or director or, what, or whatever you're applying for. Yeah, I don't like those buzzwords there. Yeah. So that, okay, let's see. Are those just internships and student worker jobs? I don't know. Okay. Okay. All right. 
Let's look at the other one real quick. Okay, uh, the other person has sent me a revised one and only sent it to me. So let me share my screen and I'll let you look at it. Okay, my I'll hit view. stop share. Okay. And let's see here, screen two, share. And again, thank you to those that are sharing their resume here. Hopefully you're getting value out of it. I think the first person found a lot of value. So Dolores, while you were talking, was editing her resume before and then she sent it, then <laughs> she sent it again. She's an overachiever. <laughs> All right. Old overachiever there. <laughs> okay. So she's got education yeah. way up high. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about those underlines. Um, they could throw off an ATS system, the under education and under professional experience. Had some people tell me they've been able to skate by with those lines, but there, there's a little risk there. And also the special characters up above, underneath the name, there's that up special character, that line in between the phone number. And I'm, I'm not sure if that could throw off the ATS or it wouldn't read the rest of the data. It doesn't have a city or location. I don't know what location area you're looking for. Okay. And somebody asked if um, an ATS header and footer, if you technically put it in the Microsoft header or footer, it will not pick it up. So you don't want to do it. Now, if it kind of looks like the header, but it's just, it's really within the text of the Word document, you're fine. So this is just a one page resume. Oh. Okay, let's look at these dates. Okay. I don't know if I would put education on top. No, that's typically for recent grads that have an education or maybe an internship. So for professionals, let the professional experience speak first. Um, so for Southern SMU, I would put, again, Dallas, Texas. I would put SMU comma Dallas, Texas, and then tab way over have the date in September 2005 August 2018, and then for those roles, put those associated dates in parentheses. Now, I don't know why there's two roles right next to each other and then another two roles. I don't know if you could have bullets under each of your roles without having a conversation, but you don't want to have all those, all those dates right justified that will confuse the hiring manager. Um, you, you can highlight the fact you have an MBA by putting it in your very top heading, your name, comma, MBA, to highlight that you've got an MBA, but then put your education down at the bottom. Okay, you reorganize so your title changed. Okay, if those titles were basically the same, just reworded, I would just pick one or pick the most recent one. If they're basically the same type, you don't need to have both of those. She's saying that that was just a reorganization. So they came up with a, or just pick the most recent one and put the dates in parentheses. Like for that top one, it would be October 2012 to August 2018. And the bottom one would be September 2005 to October 2012. No? You have to go. Jeff, can you scroll up just a, just a hair? If you, there you go. Yeah, okay, okay. So hopefully, I think she got it, okay. Let's see, what do we think about skills, proficiencies, and leadership? Skills. Bilingual, that's great. Um, software experience and technical proficiencies. Okay. 
I'm not sure if Skype and Zoom, quite frankly, everybody nowadays will have Zoom experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't um, see those listed very often unless you're... Um, unless it's asked for in the job description. Yeah, like a corporate, corporate uh, learning person. Let's go back up, Jeff, real quickly. I know we're out of time. Just to the summary section at the top. There is, really, there is no summary statement. So you need to add a summary section with a three to four line statement of who you are as a professional that aligns to the job. And you need to have areas of expertise with about nine bullet points, three times three, with key skills that align to those jobs. And then you'll start getting more phone calls. That's, that's what people say when they've, when I've worked with people and they've converted their resumes over and they've made sure to make them more customized, they, it has increased their phone volume. Okay. All right. I'm a minute over. I failed you, Jeff. <laughs> no, that's okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're not, we're not uh, backed up today. All right. Well, Carol, thank you very much. Great information. Uh, let me proceed here with a couple of closing slides. Uh, please join us uh, if you'd like. Tomorrow morning, the North Dallas Career Focus Group at 930 is having their meeting. Uh, the topic is Life Lessons with Steve Zipkoff. This uh, seminar tomorrow will not be recorded. He does not want it hanging out on Facebook or YouTube. So I just want to be able to, if you want to hear his talk, you need to join us tomorrow at 930. We will be on Facebook Live, so you can join us on Facebook or you can join us on Zoom. All that information is on the Career DFW calendar and how to log in. Uh, please join us every, uh, every week, LinkedIn Tuesdays. Next Tuesday on LinkedIn will be Terry Sullivan. He'll be giving his LinkedIn presentation. He told me he's changed it up since uh, three weeks ago when he did it last. So it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we'll be doing interviewing again on uh, Wednesday, and then we'll do another resume seg segment next Thursday. So please join us on Zoom or Facebook. Uh, please note these sessions are being recorded, and they, uh, they will be left up on the Career FW Facebook page and the Career YouTube channel. Uh, let me just show you real quick the YouTube channel so you can sort of see what it looks like. And there's a lot of things here, but if you go click on playlist, you've got really three categories, all about interviewing, all about LinkedIn, all about effective resume. So all the presentations that Carol has done will be here on this uh, effective resume list. So we can click on profile and you'll see here, here are the sessions she's done. So you can go back and review what's gone on. Ooh, we have your session on here twice. I wonder how that happened. Uh, I have to go fix that. Um, if, if you want to catch up on the interviewing sessions, they're all listed right here. Lessons, there's 13 lessons. You can click and you can watch each one of these video interviewing star stories. We talked about that your bullet point needs to have a star story. If you need to know what a star story is, there's a whole presentation on that for you. All right, let's see here. So uh, please remember, Career DFW is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We have no full or part-time employees. Everybody who's speaking, all of speakers who do this, we're all volunteers. I'm a volunteer. I've been volunteering since I started the website back in 2008 to help the unemployed in the area. Uh, please consider making a donation next time you get a uh, job. And if your company offers matching donations, please consider looking up Career DFW on that list and making a matching, letting your company double your donation that would be greatly appreciated. If we're not on the list, please contact me and I will get us on the list. Uh, I'm on two or three of them right now. And uh, you know, that would be appreciated. So Carol, once again, thank you very much for your help. Um, we will see everybody uh, hopefully either tomorrow morning at 930 or sometime next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.